For a hydroponic system, irrigation is our number one thing that we need to focus on to get optimal results. In this video, I'll be showing you guys my irrigation system and I'll show you all the parts required and a step-by-step -step guide of putting them all together. If you're new to hydroponics, it's important to know that there are many different types of hydroponic systems. In my system here, I'm using drip irrigation. This system is usually best for crops like peppers, tomatoes, cucumbers. If you're into growing stuff like lettuce, you might be better off with a system such as DWC or NFT. In this video, we're just gonna be focusing on the drip irrigation. So before we start the assembly of the irrigation system, there's one thing I wanted to talk about. With these systems, they use these pressure compensated drip emitters. Basically, the irrigation line needs to build up a certain PSI before water comes out of the drip emitter. And what this does is it allows us to water all of our plants at the exact same time and also waters them the exact same amount. So it can't be underestimated of how important these drip emitters are to make a system like this successful. And since these drip emitters are pressure compensated and they require at least 15 PSI for them to work, we need to make sure that we buy an irrigation pump that is strong enough to provide enough pressure. So we're going to start at the beginning with the irrigation pump and one of the pumps that I'm using here is a Mastercraft one half horsepower waterfall pump. With this pump here you will need a couple attachments such as this one inch uh, fitting here to a three quarter inch uh, hose thread and then there's this three quarter inch hose thread to a three quarter inch barbed fitting. So if you're gonna go with a pump like this and you need these fittings, I'll add a link in my description to find these parts. Another option is to actually just get the Floriflex pump. It's a three quarter horsepower and they design their pump so that you don't need to buy extra fittings. So you'll actually be able to put the tubing right on to the uh, pump itself. When putting the tube onto the barb fitting, you'll probably need to heat it up with a heat gun first. Okay, so the heat gun makes it extremely easy to put it on there. And the next thing we want to do is put a hose clamp onto it. Always use a hose clamp guys because I've done this without a hose clamp and the hose has popped right off. You end up just getting water everywhere. So always use a hose clamp. One of the first pieces I like to add after the pump is one of these inline filters. These are extremely important for a system like this because any organic material or debris could potentially clog our drip emitters. So it's really important to invest in one of these and install them. Okay, so we got the pump on and just so you guys know, I'm just going to create a small demonstration piece here. I'll be able to show you all the connections and how to put it together. So everything I'm using with my irrigation line and all these quick connects, they come from Floriflex. The reason why I like this company is because they make these quick connects here and it makes setting up the irrigation line really easy. If you go on their website, they have all the parts that you need to set up this system. So this right here is a end cap. So what you do is you put this piece on first and then you put this little white piece on and then stick that in there twist it on and that's it. And with this end cap, you could actually take off this end cap here like that. This allows you to purge your line just in case you have any uh, buildup of organic material or debris in your line. It's a good way to just flush out the system every once in a while or drain the system at the end of the season. In my setup, I have multiple bends in the line and I also have more than one row. So I just use pieces like the elbow and the T and they connect the exact same as this uh, end cap here. The final piece in this irrigation line is the drip emitter and you'll need one of these for every single plant that you're growing. So in my setup, I have these drip emitters spaced roughly every foot 
down the line. So we're just gonna use this tool here that is from Floriflex and it's pretty simple. You just put it onto the tube like that and you punch it and it makes a hole into the line here. So I'm just gonna grab my uh, irrigation line here and it just, it just snaps right in there and that's it. You'll put them about every foot like I said, and they just, these spikes, they just stick right into where your plant is. So just like that. Since we're growing hydroponically, it's important to know that we need to use hydroponic growing media. So what I use in my operation here is rock wool and cocoa core. These are two very common growing medias for hydroponics. And when I start my seeds, I will start them in these little uh, rock wool cubes here or plugs. So I'll plant my seeds and in about two weeks, they'll sprout and be um, big enough to plant into the four inch rock wool cubes. So it's very easy. We could just put it right into the cube there and then the plants will grow in these cubes for about two to three more weeks. Once the plants are established in these blocks here, we'll plant them into these uh, cocoa core slabs. So this here is a brand new slab. It's compressed and once we hydrate it, it will expand and be full size. So what we do is we just cut the planting holes in this bag and then we plant the plant right on top of the slab. And that's all there is for the growing media. And this is a really awesome system. It's scalable, it's clean, and it just works really well for hydroponics and drip irrigation. For this system, we operate our pumps on a timer. So the plants are getting watered multiple times per day. And each watering is roughly two to six minutes. And we will increase the amount of watering based on the needs of our plants. So when they get larger, if the weather becomes more warm, then we will add more irrigation events. So we're always adjusting it based on the needs of the plants. If you guys wanna know more about the fertilizer I'm using for this system, check out my other video I made all about the fertilizer mixing, concentration, pH, and I'll link that video at the end of this one. For more detailed information on how much to water our plants and adjusting the frequency and determining what our plants need, I'll be making a more detailed video about that in the future. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and if you have any questions, comment below and I'll see you guys in the next one.